Well, welcome back to my channel, everybody. It is Saturday evening. It is about 7 o'clock here in Nevada. And it's just me and my son tonight and for the remainder of the weekend. My husband had to go out of town to, he's going to Arizona to get, um, to file our taxes and to visit his dad. Um, he's originally from New York, but he grew up in Arizona and his whole family, well, the family that lived, that moved to Arizona from New York still lives in Arizona. Um, minus my mother-in-law who passed away. It will be two years ago, come August. Um, but my husband has always gone back to Arizona to fi have his taxes filed. Um, and the same person's been filing his taxes since he his first year filing. So it gives him an opportunity to get an extra visit in with his dad, um, considering that we can really only go to Arizona on long weekends. So every Valentine, I mean, well, every Valentine's Day, it seems like he's going to Arizona because that happens to be President's Day weekend. Um, with the exception that this year he didn't leave on Valentine's Day. He left this morning because he had to work last night. So, yeah, I've got some stories for, of the, from this week. Let me go ahead and find some drills, see what color I want to start on, and we will have story time. So, just give me a second here, and I will find my drills. Okay, here we go. So... I think I may have mentioned on Monday that I was ba I started babysitting, and um, I had him Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of this week, and uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Monday was more difficult than Wednesday. But Wednesday or Friday was more difficult than Wednesday was. Um, on Monday, I had him from 10 to 6, I think. Wednesday was 11 to 7. And yesterday, being Friday, Valentine's Day, I was supposed to have him from... 12 to 8, but then I got a phone call from his dad telling me he was going to need to drop him off early, but he didn't know exactly what time he was waiting to find out from his boss, so he ended up dropping him off at like a quarter to 11, and he was supposed, he said he, because he was going in early, he had get off an hour early. So instead of 12 to 8, I was supposed to be 11 to 7. Um, then he called <clears throat> about 3 o'clock and told me that he was going to work, end up needing to work until 8. I talked to the baby's mom at 9 o'clock, and he still was not off work at 9. She had, was just getting off work, but um, she didn't have the car. They only have one vehicle. So um, she was having a, one of her co-workers take her home. She really couldn't um, come and get the kids because the car that her coworker has, there's no room to put a car seat in it. So 
she said that if he wasn't, if her boyfriend wasn't off work by 930, that, um, sorry about the noise with my phone in the background here. Um, if he wasn't off work by 930, she would call me. Well, 9.30 rolls around, and he's still not off work. So, we had, and he had no idea what time he was getting off work. Come to find out that two employees that were supposed to come in on the night shift flaked, and they were no calls, no shifts. A third person came in, was there all of 20 minutes and got fired. So now, I don't care what city you live in, for the most part, if you live in a bigger city, <clears throat> Taco Bell's busy, because that's where he works, Taco Bell. Taco Bell's busy um, almost any time of the day or night, or they get quite a bit of business. But it's worse on a Friday night. And being that I live in a big city that's never sleeps. And the majority of our fast food restaurants out here are open 24 hours. So that makes and it being a long weekend. You have a lot of people that travel, you know, from California here every weekend anyway, but it's more likely they're going to travel for the long weekend. So, needless to say, they were busy. They were three short employee, three short of three employees, and he is still a new employee. He's only been there for a week. So, he, they needed him to stay, and of course, being a new employee, he wants to show that he's reliable. So. You know, wants, wants to show them that they can count on him to be there and be a team player when he's needed. So he stayed. Finally, at 10.30, no, 10 o'clock, she calls and says, he doesn't even know what time he's going to get home. She said, can you bring the kids to me? And... I had to, I mean, whether I could or not, I did because my husband still was not home from work at that point. So that's another part of this story. Um, so I loaded the kids up. The baby was sleeping. Fortunately, I was able to get his jacket on him and get him in the car and just wake him up just lightly. Um, by the time I started the car up and got moving, he was back to sleep. So that was good. Um, his brother, on the other hand, go back to 315 when his brother got out of school and I had drove over to their house so I could pick him up from school or I pick him up, you know, from um, getting out of school because he it's just down the road, so he just walks. Um, and then bring them bring him back here to my house. And I just had my son sit with the baby, <clears throat> excuse me, while I ran over to do that. My son's 15 years old, so to be alone just for a few minutes with the baby, it was fine. Um, the baby was asleep anyway, so, you know, it wasn't anything that he was going to have to worry about doing. So I, uh, drive to the house and realized, you know, he's probably still walking from the school. So I drove down the street figuring that I'd be able to catch him and just have him jump in the car and, you know, go. Well, I seen him and I told him, I was like, come on, let's get in the car. Let's go to my house. And he tells me he can't, that he has to walk with his cousins. And I mean, I mean, the child that I was picking up has four cousins that are siblings 
and the oldest is two years older than the boy that I was picking up. And that one that's two years older than the one I was picking up happens to be a boy. So there, I didn't quite understand the whole, I have to walk my with my cousins thing. Um, no one had informed me of this, so pretty much expected it to be, you know, baloney, which in turn I found out was. But I told him, I was like, okay, well, get to the, get to your house and I will meet you there. Or you will meet me there because I will get there before him. So I turn around and drove back to his place and they live in a gated community. So I had just, I had pulled up to the gate when my husband calls. I'm talking to him, which like I said, I will tell you about that in just a minute. And in the meantime, the child's mother calls me and I had to send it to voicemail because what my husband needed to talk to me was important. And I, you know, he doesn't have the opportunity just to call me back. So I figured she could just either leave me a message or she would call me back. So I pull up to their house and I figured there was really no sense in me going in because I was just going to put the kid in the car and we were going to leave. So I'm sitting there and sitting there. I waited about 10 minutes when I get a notification on my phone. They have a text message and it's his mom telling me that, oh, I guess he decided to go with his aunt. Sorry about the confusion. And I'm like, you know, when I stopped him on the street and told him, you know, he was coming with me, he asked me, can I just stay home by myself? And I said, no, you're not staying home by yourself. I, you have to come to my house. I need you <coughs> to help me keep an eye on your brother to keep him occupied. Because he had been with me all day. He was tired of seeing me. He needed to see something familiar. Um, my son tried playing with him and, you know, he doesn't know my son that well. So, you know, he was getting, he was getting fussy. Plus on Wednesday, we had made plans for last night. We made plans that we were, I was going to make the boy's favorite food because he's very picky. And we were going to, you know, kind of just hang out, watch some movies. And that's exactly what I, I did my part. I went and I just, he's very picky on what he eats. And when I first started watching him, he did not like macaroni and cheese. He claimed he did not like it. Well, come to find out he didn't like the way his mom made it. Um, I just buy blue box craft macaroni and cheese, the thick and creamy. I mean, I make my own, I make my homemade for my family, but for him, when he would come home from school, he would always be so hungry and he didn't have time to wait. You know, he didn't want to wait until we ate dinner. He wanted to eat right away. And a lot of times, um, he was going to be picked up and have to go to scouts or Kempo or something like that before he could eat anyway. So I just started buying the Kraft macaroni and cheese, but I would get the thick and creamy. I'd make it according to the box directions with the exception. I would add a little more milk to it. And then I would add shredded cheddar cheese and mix it up and it would make it more creamy and take the artificial cheese taste away. Hold on one second. My son's calling me. I'm back. Sorry about that. So yeah, it's just thick and creamy Kraft macaroni and cheese with extra cheese added, you know, shredded cheese added. Like I said, that, that takes the artificial cheese taste away from that powder cheese. So I told him I would make that up and I was going to have smoked sausage and corn. So I made all this stuff up and then he tells me he's not coming. I tell him he is. I get to his house and he's not there. Come to find out. Yeah, he went with his aunt. Now, not only did he go with his aunt, he, he messaged his mom and asked her. And he messaged her like five, ten minutes after I went to pick him up and seen <clears throat> him on the road. He asked if he could go to his aunt's. 
and or if he was supposed to go. He asked if he was supposed to go with his aunt. He knew he was supposed to go with me. He knew this. This is something he's had planned out. It was just too easy. Um, and before he even had an answer from his mother, he just went. I'm sitting there waiting for him. And then I get the message that he went there. So needless to say, I was very upset. One second, need a sip. Drinking. Oop, can't see it. Drinking coffee. Yeah, it's coffee. Um, <clears throat> I messaged her back that I was very upset about this because I had already talked to him. I had already seen him. She apologizes. She's working. And she works in a uh, quick care, so she doesn't have time for all of this. I message him telling him that I was not happy. He ignored that. I messaged him and told him to call me. He ignored that message. I messaged him letting him know that we were going to have a talk about this. He ignored that message. I tried to call him and it got sent to voicemail. So yeah, I was, I was pretty upset. So when his mom's boyfriend might as well say his stepdad, because eventually he will be, called to um, check on the baby. I told him the baby was fine. I was having problems with his stepson. And he said, what did he, he, said, what, did he take off? And I said, no. I said, Cause, I, said, well, I, don't, he, I said, he never even showed up. I said, and we're at my house anyway. I didn't decide to watch the kids at your place, because I said, you know, if I'm going to be there for eight, nine hours a day, at your house, that's taken away from things that, you know, my time to do things in my home. So, and I wanted to get things done around here. So I stayed here and watched the kids, or well, watched the baby, and planned on having the brother. And he said, what do you mean he didn't show up? And I proceeded in telling him, oh, yeah, he was not happy at all. So he told me he'd call me back. He said, he said, I'll call you back or his mom will call you back, but I'm going to call her and I'm going to tell her because I don't have the aunt's number. I'm going to tell her to have him get to our house. And I said, well, if he goes to your house, he's just going to take off again because nobody's there to stop him. And I said, so tell him to get there and I'll, I'll go over and get him. So I get a phone call from his mom. She is upset because she had plans tomorrow to take him, you know, to go camp, uh, to go hiking. And when her boyfriend called her, he's like, tell him to get home. Melissa's coming to get him and he is grounded for a week. He's not allowed to go anywhere. He's not allowed to do anything. He's not allowed to watch T watch what he wants on TV. He's not allowed to play video games, nothing. So of course now she's mad because he can't go hiking with her. <clears throat> and I told her, you know, when she called me back, she said, this is all messed up. You know, now he's mad. And now I'm going to go give initials because I don't want to give names. L is who I babysit. D is the father. <clears throat> He's like, she's like, D is all upset and he's mad and L can't do anything. He's grounded and this is all messed up. I was, and she was kind of acting like she was mad at me. And I'm like, you're not mad at me, are you? And she says, no, she said, I'm just mad at the whole situation. And I said, well, you know, you should be mad at L. L did this. He knew he was supposed to come over here and he chose to do what he wanted to do. Well, at this point, I didn't realize she still did not know the full story. She did not know the full story until I dropped him off or dropped the kids off. So she was all upset because Elle couldn't do anything. But when she found the whole story out, oh, then she was you know, totally on board with him not doing anything. So anyway, I go and get him and I sit down and have a talk with him. And he is so manipulative. And this kid is, he 
he is so smart as far as how to get, how convincing he can be. He sat there and told me, well, I thought I was doing you a favor. And he said, and my mom said I could go. And I said, Loretta, or L, your mom thought that I said you, you know, could go or that I asked, told you to ask her. She thought I was fully aware of everything that was going on. And of course, like I said, I wasn't. And I said, she had no idea that I had been there to pick you up and that you went and did something else. And she also didn't realize that you went without her giving you the okay. <clears throat> and he said, well, I was trying to help her out and help you out. I thought it would be easier for you if you only had one kid to watch instead of two. And I thought it would help her. I'd be saving her money because she wouldn't have to pay you for babysitting me. And I'm like, first off, it'd be easier if I was watching you instead of your brother because you're 10, going to be 11, and your brother's 18 months. Come on. Really? You're, you're self-sufficient. You're easier to take care of than he is. And two, I said, your mom really isn't paying me for watching you anyway since you are helping me with him. I told her not to worry about, you know, only to give me half of what she would normally pay me for you, but she gives me the full amount for him. I said, so you just, you weren't trying to help me and you weren't trying to help her. You were trying to help yourself. You knew what you wanted to do and you knew what you didn't want to do. And I said, and, you know, you can't, you don't just call your mom because, you know, she told me, he sent a text saying, I'm going to go with my aunt. It wasn't, can I go with my aunt or would it be okay? He just, he has this thing where he wants to tell everybody what he's what he wants to do and I told him it's like you're not even 11 years old you aren't old enough to tell people what you're going to do you can ask it doesn't mean you're going to get to do it but you can ask but you don't tell anybody anything <clears throat> and I said I'm responsible for you you know as far as everybody knew I would you were supposed to be with me so if something would have happened it would have fallen in my lap because you were supposed to be with me and you weren't. So, yeah, we get to that part. Now, let's take a break from that just for a minute. Because my brother, like I said, my husband, why was I going to say my brother? I don't know why I was going to say my brother. My husband was not home from work yet. My husband went into work at 3 o'clock Friday morning. He worked until 11 o'clock p.m. Friday night. 20 hours. On Wednesday, he worked 17 hours. On Monday and Tuesday, he worked 10 hours. And on Thursday, he worked 11 hours. So, yeah, he's basically, he's going to work. He's coming home. He's eating. He sits down at the kitchen table and falls asleep. I wake him up and I send him to bed. And that is how this week has been. And they wanted him to work 12 hours today, being Saturday, 12 hours on Sunday, and 10 hours on Monday. He couldn't do that. He's out of town. So when I left to go take the kids home, I called my husband and asked him, you know, what time, if he was going to be getting out of there on time or not. And he said, yeah, as far as he knew. And I told him, I said, well, I'm going to take the kids. I'll drop them off and then I'll, um, I'll be home. So after I dropped the kids off and sat down and had a talk with the mom, and she then realized that, no, I wasn't aware of what was going on and that he hadn't even gotten permission before he was over there. I was, he, he's grounded, but I did tell her, I said, you know, cause I mean, I was mad, but after we sat down and talked, he did apologize to me now, whether he was sincere about it. I don't know. He sounded quite sincere and he usually doesn't apologize to anybody anyway, even if, a, even a fake apology he wouldn't make. So because he did, I just told him, I said, well, we're not doing that anymore. When you're supposed to be with me, you will be with me. 
the dad called later on. I talked to him and we made it, made it the agreement that the only time that he is supposed to call his mom or his dad is if there is an emergency. If he wants to go someplace or has a question about something, if it's a question about something that has nothing to do with, you know, where his whereabouts, he can wait till he gets home or till they get home. They're not going to bother them at work over nonsense. If he is asking if he could go someplace or do something during the time that he's supposed to be with me, he is to call me and I am the one that makes that uniform decision on whether he gets to go or not. Whatever decision I make, if his parents don't agree with it, we will discuss it between the two of us or the three of us. But nine times out of ten, the answer is going to be no because I don't want that type of responsibility. When he's with me, he's supposed to be with me, he's going to be with me. He's already being taken on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I take him and drop him off at Scouts on Thursday evening or Tuesday evenings. And Kempo, which is some kind of martial arts stuff, on Thursdays. And then starting next week, I will be dropping him off on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and there being Wednesdays and Thursdays at Kempo and Tuesdays at Scouts. So he's <clears throat> It's not like he doesn't get to do anything. So, <clears throat> yeah, I've had kids all week, and I haven't seen my husband. My husband wakes up this morning. Well, I wake up this morning at 8 o'clock, and I'm running out of the bedroom. And we sleep. We're Right now, we're sleeping in separate rooms because of his schedule. Um, he's, when he gets off, when he works his regular 10-hour shifts, he comes home and he's a back. He comes home at like quarter to five. He eats dinner. He takes a shower. He falls asleep sitting there trying to watch some TV. And by eight thirty, I'm sending him up to bed. Um, I can't go to bed that early. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't go to bed that early. I don't want. And he's waking up at three o'clock in the morning, so I don't want his alarm to be waking me up at three. Or me to be waking him up when I come into bed. So just temporarily right now with his crazy schedule, um, I'm sleeping in our guest room. Which is fine. The bed's more comfortable anyway. Um, but I come running out of my room and see he's still laying in bed. Because it's just down the hall and I can see we have French doors on our bed. On our bedroom we have French doors. And they're wide open. So I seen him laying in bed. I was like, oh my God, Mike, what are you doing up? Or I mean, what are you doing in bed? You're supposed to be at work. And he's like, honey, it's Saturday. I was just like, oh, okay, go back to sleep. Come downstairs and I have my coffee set up to automatically brew. So the coffee is ready when I come down the steps. I'm drinking my coffee and I'm like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be getting ready to leave to go to Arizona. Because he wanted to be on the road between 9 and 9.30. And I thought, you know what? If, he, if he's not, there's no rush. The appointment to get the taxes done is until tomorrow. So there's no rush. Just sleep. He deserves the sleep. He needs the sleep. And the more sleep he gets, the safer his trip was going to be today driving. So he finally did come down. Um, and then he was upset because he found out that he could have worked, you know, like I said, today, tomorrow, Monday. So he was upset that he decided to turn down the work and, or not turn it down because he, that he had already told them last week in the beginning of the week that he was, wasn't going to be around this weekend. And they said that that would be fine, that they'd have no problem having you know, the, the shifts covered. And then last night he found out that a couple guys couldn't work and now he couldn't, they had to hire somebody else to come in off of from another company. So that upset my husband because now they had already replaced him. You know, replaced, they filled the position and didn't bother asking him because they had already known he wasn't going to be here. So he's like, why? So why don't I just, why do I do this? He said, I could just send my taxes to the guy. He could prepare them, send them back to us, and then we could sign it and then send it out. Why do I do these things? Because for my husband, when he works week, well, if he works anything over 40 hours, it's double time. Every hour over 40 hours is double time. So today was all, or last night from 4 o'clock 
until, um, I'm sorry, not over for anything over 10 hours because he's he is normally supposed to work four tens. So anything over 10 hours on a four ten week is double time. So every hour he worked from four o'clock until 11 o'clock last night was double time. All of today, any weekend that you work is double time. And any holiday you work is normally triple time if you work holidays, but because President's Day is one of the, is the only paid holiday or non-paid holiday that he has in his trade. So if he would have worked on Friday or on Monday and being a holiday instead of getting triple time, it still would have been double time. So in other words, he could have worked today, tomorrow, and Monday. He would have worked, worked 36 hours, but he would have gotten paid for 72. And he didn't take it because he had already made the appointment, had the arrangements <clears throat> to get the taxes done. So he was, <laughs> he was not happy when he left today because he's thinking I could be working and instead I'm driving to Arizona. And he's like, and I'm going to, I'd be making a whole lot more money than I'm going to get back on my taxes. I was like, no, money isn't always everything. And he's going to have this crazy schedule that he's working right now for the next nine months. So he'll definitely make up, you know, for missing this weekend. So yeah, like I said, between the kids that I've been watching and my husband who has not been around because he's been working or sleeping, I'm dealing with my hormonal 15 year old son. Um, the mood swings and the temperament and add the autism spectrum disorder to that. And he is just a raging bull. Constant attitude and mouthing off and struggling getting him to do his schoolwork. He was pulling all straight A's and B's the first two quarters. Now we're in the third quarter and... He's not applying himself. He's rushing through his work to get it done. He's not getting it done properly. So on the 27th, I have to go to the school and sit down with the IEP, which any um, for anybody who doesn't know what an IEP is, an IEP is an individual educational plan. And this is for students who have you know, some form of a special need or learning disability. Um, it just gives them, it, it, they have different services that are offered and stuff. Now my, my son does not take any um, special needs classes. He is all, he, all his classes are regular freshman classes. Um, but he does have struggles with math. So the services that's offered to him is that he has a teacher that sits down and verbally um, gives him the questions. Is my son, he, you can ask him a math question, he can tell you the answer. But if he has to put it on a piece of paper and show the work, you know, show, show how he got the answer, he can't do that. That's where the information gets really lost in translation. He does not know how to express um, how to do it. So they will um, sit down with him and go over that. But um, so on the 27th, I go in with the IEP team. There's a whole team of people. There's all of his teachers. There's the principal. There is the they do have a learning disability teacher that comes in um, just simply to give us suggestions and the you know information that we need to help him. <coughs> um, there's the principal, there's the assistant principal, there's the guidance counselor. Yeah, there's a, there's about <coughs> excuse me, he has eight teachers. There's about 15 of us in there. You know, 15 of them plus me. So we will sit down. He was due to have his IEP revised in this coming October, but we are going to um, 
do an early revision on that just to see if there's anything um, that we can do to allow him um, more time to, I mean, well, he already has plenty of time to do this, more opportunities because he goes to school only on Mondays. He goes to a charter school. So he is in school Mondays from 7.30 in the morning to 11.30 in the morning. And then Tuesday through Friday, he does his classroom assignments online. Well, he has been coming home saying, I'm getting everything done in class on Monday. So all I have to do is sign on every day just for attendance sake. Because if he doesn't, if each day that he doesn't sign on, they consider that a day missed. And each day missed that's not made up in that same week equals five days missed to school. So he signs on just long enough for it to register that he signed on and then he logs off and he doesn't do anything else. So now he's going to start going to school Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. When he goes on Wednesdays, there are no classes on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are lab days for all the students that need to catch up on assignments or have struggles. They go into the labs and all the teachers are in the labs and they can help, you know, for each subject. Or they'll have a teacher there, not all the teachers for each subject, but there'll be one teacher in the lab on Wednesdays per subject. So there'll be a math teacher, there'll be a science teacher, there'll be a, um English teacher, so on and so forth. So he's going to start going on Mondays for his regular classes, Wednesdays for some help getting caught up, <clears throat> and Fridays to get just to be able to get some extra help there as well. Um, he has three attempts on his quizzes or his assignments. So it's like, I think it's assignments are three attempts and quizzes are two attempts to get a better grade. So the first time, if he doesn't do so well, he can take it again and um, for a better grade. And then they'll go with whichever grade is um better of the two. Um, and then like I said, some, some of them are three times. Well, he'll take one and he'll take a quiz. He won't do well on it because he rushes through it. And when I say he rushes through it, I mean, it's, it, he rushes through it. It can have, you know, 10 questions and he's done in like five minutes because he's not reading the question thoroughly or he's just guessing at what he thinks he knows. He'll look at the he'll look at the multiple choice answers and just pick one. Um, so he can take off and play video games or computer games or play on his guitar or whatever. Which um, I don't need anybody to tell me. Well, you know, you're the mom. Uh, hold on. Okay, I'm froze up again, so I'm going to start a second video. I'll be right back.